I'm Anthony Al Elmore, president and founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We are the Black Buddhist Voice in America. Today I bring you another exciting and historical Black Buddhist lecture. Please understand that Buddhist history is Black history. My lecture today is the Buddhist religion empowers the Naga. Now, this Black Buddhist lecture is designed for Nagas. Now, please understand, if you are Black and learning Buddhism, you will only learn Buddhism that is inclusive of our Black culture, history, and language from proud black Buddhists. Please understand that it was over 1,000 years after the death of the Buddha that Buddhism made it to China. And it was another 400 years that Buddhism made it to Japan. Now, it was another 400 years once it made it to Japan, so that makes 1,400 years. Now, please note that the original people of China, Japan, and Korea were black people. Please understand that this history has not been told, but the lighter-skinned Asians kill the black people just like the race and America, of the Native Americans, was almost annihilated. Now, let me make one thing clear about the Buddhist religion. In the first century AD, racism entered the Buddhist religion. This is the time in history whereas the culture, history, and language of Buddhism was changed. And this is when our world was introduced to racism. Please understand or look up the word is called the Shaka era. The word Shaka means foreigner in the language of Sanskrit. Now the foreigner was King Kanishka. He was a Kushan king. The Kushans ruled Afghanistan and they later came to rule India. When you look at the Kushan King Kanishka, you will find that this is the time of our history where Buddhism was separated by race, culture, and language. It was King Kanishka and Ash Vagosha who created a new Buddhism. This new Buddhism was called Mahayana Buddhism. Mahayana Buddhism is characterized by the Sanskrit language. And this is the time that they had the second, fourth Buddhist council where they extricated all black Buddhist history, culture, and language. Now, please understand that the Buddhist religion was founded by Nagas. Now, you want to say, you could say Naga, you can say Nega, but these were Nagas. Let us bring this lecture to a 21st century century discussion. A few days ago, comedian Bill Maher caused a lot of controversy when he made a joke that he was a house nigger. Now, let's listen to Bill Maher and how he used the N-word. Now, let's listen to Bill Maher. So we're about to talk about a conversation a lot of folks have been having this weekend. We're talking about Bill Maher. Made a career out of being controversial, but this time a lot of people think he has gone too far using one of the most controversial words in the English language. For now, I'll say the N-word, but just so you're not shocked, like Maher's guests and the audience were, I want to warn you that you're about to hear that word itself in this discussion with my guests. I've got to get to Nebraska more. <laughs> I... You're welcome. We'd love to have you work in the fields with us. Work in the field. That's part of that. That's <laughs> Senate. 
I'm a house nigga. <laughs> no, it's, it's a joke. When I was a kid, I lived in a country where people couldn't accept a black quarterback. Now think about that. A black man was thought by his mere color not good enough to lead a football team. And now, to live in your time, Mr. President, when a black man can lead the entire free world. Uh, words alone do me no justice. Um, so, Mr. President, if I'm going to keep it 100, yo, Barry, you did it, my nigga. Exclusive Oprah on Bill Maher's use of the N-word. Welcome to Access Hollywood. Maher's offensive remark last week on his show, Real Time, which he apologized for, cut deep with Oprah, who we spoke with, along with her queen sugar creator, Ava DuVernay. I believe that it should not be a part of the language right. and the lexicon. You know, I have this wonderful um, coffee table book um, that sits in my living room. It's called Freedom. And one of the pages in there that sears my brain, it's a lynching. And it's a lynching of a family. And then there's a whole mob of people who've come out to watch, and they're watching it like it's sport. And I always think about that family. And I actually had this conversation with Jay-Z. Uh, when he was saying, we can take the power back, we can take the power out of the word, we're changing the power, I go, you will never change it for that family. Right. You will never change it for the people for whom it was the last word they heard mm. when they were hung or they were dismembered or they were, you know, degraded. So I now know it's an argument I'm not going to win. I'm not going to win it. Not in my lifetime. And that's okay. Oprah Winfrey says that this will not change in her lifetime. And Oprah Winfrey is correct because the word nigga or niggas will not change is because our ancestors who were the niggas understood what was going to go on and they called themselves the niggas to come in and give us dignity. That's why this lecture is called Black Buddhists are this lecture is called niggers, or niggers are empowered. Now, please understand that the Buddhist religion empowers the niggers. That's our subject. Now, we African Americans reference our history of the nigger. Now, from our tragic past of slavery, Jim Crow and racist America, what we black people are not aware of is our great and glorious black history. Buddhist history is black history, and our history and it is our history of the Nagas. Now, let us be clear. African Americans or black people cannot control white people in their indignant racially offensive word, nigger or nagas. Now, we, however, exert or have 100% control as to how we perceive the word and react to the word. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association chant the words, Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. Now, Myoho Renge Kyo is the title of the Lola Sutra, the highest teachings of the Buddha Shakyamuni. It was Nitrin Shonen who added the black or Pali word Namu to the title. The word Namu means to awaken or it means to give reverence. Now, Myo is, means correct and Ho means law. The word Ren means lotus flower. This represents the law of cause and effect. Now, racism is a cause and effect phenomenon. The word kyo means to dispel delusion. Now, we have the choice of viewing phenomena from the standpoint of a common mortal, that is, through delusion. 
or we can view it from a Buddhist or a Buddha in life point of view. The title of our lecture today is Buddhism Empowers the Negus. Let us go to basic elementary English. We learn in school about homonyms. Each of two or more words having the same spelling but different meanings and origins like whole and whole. Now, a homograph, each of two words having the same pronunciation but different meanings, origins, and spelling. Now, the word nagast, nigas, is like tomato and tomato. In the Ethiopian language, nagas means king of kings. Now, in ancient times, Nagas means black or African people. Let me bring your attention to April the 4th, 1968 and August the 7th, 1968. Good evening. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. After Dr. King, or after the death of Dr. King, the spirit of African Americans was at its lowest ebb. There is a teaching in Buddhism that teaches us that the voice does the work of the Buddha. Prior to 1968 in America, to call someone black was synonymous to spitting on them insulting, cursing them, and even worse, the word, it was worse than the word nigger. Back in the day, if you call another man black, those are fighting words. Now, on August the 7th, 1968, James Brown released a song called, Say It Loud. <laughs> this phenomenon from a Buddhist standpoint of the law of cause and effect. We know the cause of the pain, the hurt, the evil of white races calling us nigger. The only way that we as a people and we as a society can get over this is to embrace an enlightened viewpoint or what we call kyo or Buddhist teachings. Let me go into Kyo of Buddhist teachings. We African Americans were brutally torn away from Africa, whereas white races extricated all of the black history, culture, and language from black people. To this very day, we African Americans do not know our black Buddhist history and the history of the Naga. Let me give you a quick black Buddhist lesson. Please Google the word Naga Sudan. What is going to come up is a region in Africa called Nubia. When you study the history of Nubia, we come to the kingdom of Kush. When you study the kingdom of Kush, we come to its capital called Muro. You will not believe Anthony L. Elmore, but some of you might believe the father of history, whose name was Herodotus, who writes, quote, Muro was the cradle of the gem, the sophists. The word gem means naked, and sophist means philosopher. People of that time were not called Buddhists, but they were called Shem Nesophis. Please view the Aphrodite Temple. This is a Buddhist temple where we find the snake emerging from the lotus flower. We see the lion head. This is an edict of Ahsoka. Now, what I want you to make a note of is the snake or the dragon. 
we must understand that the snake is called a naga. Please understand that African people or black people in ancient times were called Kushites, Ethiopians, Nubians, and Nagas. Now, in Africa, they are called Nubian. In the Bible, they are called Kush or Kushites. Now, please understand that it was the father of history, Herodotus, who writes, quote, Herodotus speaks of Muro as the cradle of the gymnosophists or Buddhists. He goes right, quote, We see here that the followers of Buddha are called gymnosophists. It has been observed that Nero of Ethiopia was Muru. This is confirmed by the observation of Hilodorius. The priests of Muro were of a humane character and were called gymnosophists. Now, this is what Herodotus writes about Ethiopia. Quote, and upon his return to Greece, they gathered around in Acts, tell us about the great land of blacks called Ethiopia. And Herodias said, quote, There are two great Ethiopian nations. One is Sin, that's India, and the other is Egypt. That's Dorius, Greek historian, 100 B.C. See, what black people must understand that the people of Africa and India were the same black people. Some were Negroid with coarse hair, wide nose, and we have the proto asteroid dark skin, straight hair, keen features. There, there are two things we want you to learn. These Ethiopians were black and Buddhist. There was an Ethiopian general who came to India from Africa. They named the river Ganges after him. The Africans in India were Buddhists and they were called Nagas. Now, let us move to the kingdom of Magadha. So you are clear, people of Magadha came from the Indus Valley Civilization. There is no archaeological, anthropological, genetic science, literary science, or any people coming to the Indus Valley called white people. The reason that we make this point is because black history is Buddhist history. There was no such thing as a white Buddha until A.D. when the white King Kanishka changed the Buddha from black to white. We see this in the Ganhara carvings when the Buddha was made to look Greek. Where I'm trying to take you is to the Naga. The people of ancient India were called Naga. The Buddha comes from the Magadha kingdom and the kingdom was founded by See, Su, Naga. The word Naga means snake or dragon. Naga is the symbol of the logo of the Buddha, a Buddhist. The word Naga means black people. Now, niggas, Naga, what you define is our true black history. Now, when you go to it and you associate it with slavery, that is not our true history. Please understand that the word Naga means snake and dragon, and they are Buddhist symbols. The Nagas were the Africans of Asia. In Asia we find the snake or dragon in regards to Buddhists. We say Nagas or niggas or niggas, we are talking about our ancient Egyptian black people who were called niggas and they were Buddhists. In the most extensive work 
that I've encountered regarding the Nago or Buddhists is from the 1836 work of British historians of Godfrey Higgins called the Anacalypsis. Many white races and Asians mislead you regarding the Nagas and they explain the Nagas worship the snake. Godfrey Higgins explained that the first representation or logo of the Buddhist religion was the Naga or the snake. The most extensive work that I have encountered regarding the Naga or Buddhist is from the 1836 work of British historian Sir Godfrey Higgins called the Anacopsis. Many white races and Asians will mislead you regarding the Nagas and explain that the Nagas worship the snake. You see, Godfrey Higgins explained that the first representation or logo of the Buddhist religion was the Naga or snake. This is how Godfrey Higgins explains it. Quote, it possessed the faculty of renewing itself without the process of generation or fructification as an outward appearance by annually casting its skin. This annual renewal made it emblemical of the sun or the year. Thus, we see all the refined allegories rise out of one another almost without end, generally to outward appearance absurd. But when understood often beautiful, I think that no unprejudiced person reading Genesis would ever suspect that the serpent, their name, was the evil principle or the devil. The literal meaning of the text in context, in fact, falsifies any such idea. And yet almost all Christian priests choosing to have recourse to allegory to serve their own purpose. Though they never cease abusing those who teach that the book is an allegory. Maintain that a real devil or an evil principle is meant, and that by text merely a common serpent is not literally to be understood. The fact is, they have among them the tradition of its true or rental meaning but how to explain it if they not know not, unquote. You see, when it comes to the Buddhist religion, even black Christian ministers mislead black people about Buddhism and our black Buddhist history. The book of Genesis and the Bible comes from Buddhist teachings. However, both black and white people mislead us regarding the Naga or the snake. See, the Nagas wrote the book of Genesis or the Nagas or the Buddhists. This is what Garfield Higgins writes about the subject. Quote, Mr. Franklin says, quote, another striking instance is recorded by the very intelligent traveler Wilson regarding the representation of the fall of our parents sculptured in the magnificent temple of Istanbul in Nubia. He says that a very exact representation of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden is to be seen in that cave and that the serpent climbing the tree is especially delineated in the whole subject of tempting of our first parents most 
secretly exhibited. How is the fact that the mythos of the second book of Genesis can be found in Nubia, probably a thousand miles above Hello, Halafias, to be accounted for, except that it came from Upper India with the first Buddhist or Jim the Sophist, unquote. You see, much of the Bible comes from Buddhist teachings. The whites in racism misinterpret Buddhist teachings by making the Naga or the snake and evil creature. See, the way they made black evil or the Buddhist evil by creating the snake as being the devil. See, the snake represents wisdom in Buddhism. We see the Naga represented in medicine. Look on the symbol of medicine and you will see the Naga or the snake. Let us give you a better explanation of the Naga as explained by Godfrey Higgins. Now, let's take this thing just a bit further. Now, this is what Higgins says. You see, this is from the Garden of Eden, explaining it from the uh, a Buddhist standpoint or explaining Genesis from a Buddhist standpoint. Now, Godfrey Higgins write, quote, by persuading Eve to eat the apple, he was the immediate cause of the propag propagation of the species that, without the opening of the eyes by which expression is meant. In fact, the exciting of the desire of procreation. The race of man would not have been multiplied and that without its influence in making man in this respect wise, he would have forever continued in a state of unprolific thought, innocent ignorance. According to the allegorial allegory in Genesis. Little as it is understood, we may certainly conclude that the serpent put in motion the human formative power and was at the same time the cause of death or at least apparent destruction of mana, of his decomposition or return to dust. But I think the cobra was emblematic or something more than the destroying power. Buddha was the protogonus of or first begotten, the first emanation of divine power wisdom by whom and for whom all things were created. But the creature of all things was also the destroyer and the Naga being the emblem of the destroyer and destroyer being divine wisdom, it became also the emblem of divine wisdom. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of creation. That's Genesis, unquote. Now, Godfrey Higgins explains that Genesis was an allegory, but what you have is teachers who misinterpret this Buddhist story. See, as real, Buddhists deal with the law of cause and effect. The eating of the apple was the cause, and dying was the effect. Many religions teach of a devil to control and mislead people. See, our point here is to introduce you to the Buddhist teachings by introducing you to the Nagas. A Nagas, a Nagas, a Nagas. Please Google the word Kibro Nagas. This, this is the Ethiopian writings of the glory of King Nagas. A Nagas means king. Now, let me conclude this 
Buddhist lecture. I am standing in front of my Buddhist altar. Inside this altar is our object of veneration called the Gohanzan. A Gohanzan is a banner of propagation that represents the Lotus Sutra, the highest of the Buddhist teachings. Now, speaking of the word Nagas, we have Nagas on our object of worship. Let me show you. Now, here we have the character of the Naga girl. Now, right next to the Naga girl to the right, we find the Naga kings, the Nagas. So, we got Nagas on the Gohanzan. Right here to the left, you see Shaka Muni, Buddha, who is a Naga. And to the right, we see Taho Buddha. They, these were Nagas. All the gods on the Gohanzan are Nagas, or black people. Now, Our ancestors were Nagas, and they were not slaves. They were kings. Just because someone calls you a word does not have to be your reality. I am a Naga, king of kings, and we Nagas are empowered by Buddhism. I am Anthony M. Elmore, president and founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, bringing to you an exciting Buddhist lecture. Nagas are empowered by Buddhism. Thank you very much. I get down on my knees and I pray Practice peace and love and respect. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord will suit your way. Devotion to the mystic law and cause and effect teaching. I believe and wisdom reaching. I get down on my knees and I pray. Every day, I pray the Lord will suit your way. The Lord will suit you. Makes a lot of sense. It's about self-development and enlightenment. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord will suit your way. The way that I pray, overcome my sins. I say the Lord's title again and again. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord will suit your way. The Lord will suit you. Pass the test. The Lord will suit you. Brings me happy. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord will suit your way. Falling in the Lord will suit you. I start to sing. I sing so loud. I start to scream. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. And I pray the Lord will suit your way. I don't pray like my Eastern brother. I pray and sing with my own culture. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. And I pray, Lord, will suit your way. I pray the way that I feel. 
I pray to back away and I start to squeal. Get out of me. There's one thing you must know about me. I get like the church folk and I get happy. I get down on knees and I pray every day. And I pray, Lord, to suit your ways. I get down on knees and I pray every day. And I pray, and I pray. 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 I pray.